Mr. Robert Lucas, uh, Nobel Economy Prize, 1995, professor of the University of Chicago, economist, of course. Thank you very much for being with us here. Good to be here. Okay, um, Latin America has been growing uh, steadily uh, for the last 10 years now, and uh, it uh, defended itself amazingly well, unexpectedly well, uh, from the uh, global credit crisis. So, uh, which is historic for Latin American terms. But the question is, uh, does this mean that Latin America uh, has done it? I mean, Latin America is there. I mean, it, it, this is the, the, the path to progress. Uh, that's, that's, that's all it is now? I mean, Argent I mean I'm going to talk about Argentina. <laughs> but <laughs> Latin America has had many periods of growth and then periods of decline or stag stagnation. I mean, that's the history of the continent. Um, well, yeah, and and uh, it seems like Brazil is sort of on a good path. Chile has been on a good path for a long time. Argentina has recovered, but but not in a way that's sustainable. They're they're getting deeper into old uh, old uh, ways of running running an economy. Uh, so it's a mix. Mexico is, tr which everyone in the United we thought was going to be the leader of all of Latin America after NAFTA is, you know, st they're, 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 they got some good things and some bad things, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not the miracle that we, we hope for. Yeah. So it's a pretty mixed mixed bag, I would say. Okay, but, uh, and it's true about the, the, the cycles that you said. I mean, that's completely true. But the reason I ask the question is because I, I would say it's the first time that Latin America has been growing for 10 years in a row, I mean, uh, without crisis. And, uh, and again, I would like to highlight the way that it defended itself uh, from the uh, credit crisis. Uh, and, and, and I guess that the ultimate question would be, what do you think as a region Latin America needs of, if it needs it at all, to keep growing and to make a difference? Don't let this crisis dominate y y your thinking. And the European Union has, has been a, a, a glorious event starting back in the 60s. Uh, the the, the, the war-torn countries recovered quickly. The Southern Europe, which was never rich, Spain and, and Italy became rich. And, and it was a free trade arrangement that, that, that didn't shut out us. It didn't shout out the United States or Canada or Japan. It was sort of a benevolent, uh, 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 and, and, and the, the well-being of, you know, Europe, North America, Japan, many other countries in Asia flowed out of this free trade capitalist world. Uh, now, so did the, so did the crisis. Uh, that's another aspect of the capitalist world. But it's a very, it's, it, it doesn't negate all the achievements that have been made over the past. Now, Argentina was part of the European banking system during the old fixed exchange rate regime. They had uh, Spanish and French banks invested in, in the country. They were, they were becoming a part of this successful world economy. And then they, it blew up. They, they confiscated the, 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 the Spanish banks. They, you know, took away. So, so they cut themselves off from that, and that they cut themselves off from the crisis, too. I mean, they, now the European banks have nothing to do with Argentina for obvious reasons. Uh, but, but that's not a that's not, I don't think that's a good thing. Uh, you don't want to cut yourself off from f from from Europe, from from North America. There's, there's still a, a way too many trade barriers way here, and uh, it, it's 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 limited. Latin American growth in the past. Again, Chile is a great exception, but it's limited growth in the past and it'll do it again. There's only one way to succeed in this world, and that's to get in with this, this, this big club of free trade successful economies. Of course. Um, given the current situation, the economic situation of the world, with uh, Europe on the verge of a crisis, United States, uh, United States are growing marginally, yeah. and has been doing it for the last two or three years. Yeah. And it seems that in the near future is going to be the same. So it seems he would say. But anyway, but the question is: on the next, where do you see the state of the world, economically speaking, in the next ten years? I mean, what does the United States is going to be ever the economic engine again? What's going to be the situation in Europe? Where, where, where do you see it from the, from now to the next seven to ten years? 
I think one of the things, and this is this is not I, something I can prove, but I think one of the features, this is the U.S. recession now uh, has been prolonged. It's the first prolonged recession in, in the post-war period, and <clears throat> and and there's basically every pre there's a return to this three percent growth trend, and we just haven't done that. There's been basically no recovery. <clears throat> in the United States, and that's an unusual event <clears throat> no, for us, and, and, and no one quite knows why. But here's my, th my th thinking. Mm -hmm. The U.S. GDP is about 30 to 40 percent higher than the European countries. We all grow at about the same rate, but, 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 but there's a pretty big gap in produ production between France, Britain, Germany on the one hand, and the United States on the other. And it's sort of, why should there be a gap between these countries that have the same, same, uh, basically the same kind of economy, the same, uh, they trade with one another, they exchange uh, te technologies. It should be one economy. Where's the, why a 40% gap? Now I think it has a lot to do with the Europeans went very deeply into the welfare state. It's a high tax, high regulation uh, uh, world. And, and the U.S. seems to be moving in that kind of direction. Uh, now, if that's the case, we're going to drop down, I think, and if I'm right that the welfare state is, is cost, costs something like 30% of GDP, of course it has its benefits too, I mean, you, you get something for your money. Uh, if I'm right about those things, then, then the U.S. will sink down to where France, Germany, UK are. Okay, well, that's too bad, I think. I think it's a mistake. But, but it's, it's not a, any disaster. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not Argentina. You know, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's at, at that point, I think the world is going to, if this, this is what happens, we'll just have one more large welfare state economy. Welfare state costs you something, but it, it's consistent with economic growth. I mean, European economic growth has been impressive. Uh, that, that's my most pessimistic. And it's not very pessimistic. It's not indeed. Um, when you're saying that the United States is going, uh, it, it's it's uh, it's moving toward that direction to a welfare state. Are you talking? Uh, are you talking about Democrats or Republicans or regardless? Democrats, of course. I mean, it, it's socialized medicine, uh, high marginal tax rates. The, this this myth that there's some rich people out there that they can pay for what anything we we want to do. I mean, it's just it's not true, and and it, and, it, and it ignores the huge incentive effects uh, of of high marginal tax rates that the more successful you are, the, the, the less you keep, right? So... No good. But it's not, it doesn't kill you. It just, it just hampers you. But it makes a difference. I mean, because, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, I mean, it obviously makes a difference because you just mentioned it. I do, I think it is. And, uh... I, I think, I, I, I think, with, without these, these policies that have occurred during this administration that I mentioned, I think we would have recovered long ago. Investment in the U.S. fell down and just stayed down. <clears throat> Still isn't picking up. So are you saying you got to ask yourself if I were? This not a it's not a liquidity crisis. The, the American corporations, non-financial corporations, are loaded with cash. They just don't seem to want to invest it. So what you're saying is that uh, that uh, uh, in the in the next ten years, if elections in the United States is going to be in four days now, yeah, if Republicans would take over for the next ten years, the U.S. growth would be higher. I think it'd recover from the from the <clears throat> long-term economic growth in the United States is is, is not going to be higher than three percent. That that that's just that that's true of any successful economy. The only but if you're down in a recession, you grow fast to to, to get out of the recession. So I should, we should be growing at you know five percent now. Not for, we can't do it forever, but on the way up out of the out of the recession, we we'll, we'll, we should get a burst of that. So sometimes people mean recovery growth for a year or two. Sometimes people mean a s sustained long run growth rate, and th the answers are different depending on which you're talking about. Yeah. Now uh, you you you've been very clear that uh, one way or another is not the is not the. Uh, very, uh, it's not bad. I mean, a welfare state will will, will grow, will grow a little bit less. Kind of Europe, but still growing. But uh, what would be, economically speaking, in, in terms of development, in terms of uh, 
pulling people out of the poverty, we would, which would be the, the best scenario, the best way to do it? I mean, all the capitalist economies have been pretty good at pulling people out of poverty. That, that's, that's not... Uh, There's it, always going to be some people who, for more individual reasons, can't make it. We, we need some kind of safety net um, for, for, for people, you know, social security systems, some kind of health care for, for, for people who can't afford uh, air, air, on their own. That's not a way to help people out of poverty. That's the, that's the way to help people who are in distress, who are stuck in poverty. The only way to help people out of poverty is, is the main thing is schooling and, and their own efforts. Now, tell me something, and uh, I, I don't mean to, 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 to talk about politics, but uh, listening, to well, we anyway. me, well, <laughs> listening to you just struck me, listening to you just struck me, which I think is a fact, that from 1980, the last 30 years, uh, uh, Democrats have been in power in the United States only for uh, 12 years of those, which is are uh, the eight years of Clinton and yeah. four years of, uh, of Barack Obama. Right. And it seems that whenever the Democrats, in, in those past 30 years, when the Democrats have been in power, they have been able to achieve uh, economic growth. Of course, Bill Clinton's years, and now the last two years of, uh, of Barack Obama. No, and Obama, we know Obama has not. Obama is, is, is w w people are celebrating a 2% growth rate now as, as a recovery. Now, 3% th th is normal, and we're already, our level is way behind, so, so, uh, so a normal recovery would be 5%. So that 2% is, is failure. 2% growth rate in the Obama, it's higher than it was last quarter maybe. I mean, but that doesn't make it a success. That is just economic failure. No one would disagree with that. Absolutely, but uh, can anybody have done it better given the international circumstances? Well, we've had other, every single post-war war recession, even those like the so-called uh, Volcker recession, uh, have been started out about as deep a as this one. And of course, this, this one started out in the, at the Bush administration. So by the time, by the time Obama took office, we were at the bottom. Uh -huh. And then, and then the, the declines stopped. That that was, that was good. Uh, and it, but then it just we just never, never, never returned. Yeah, but but my question is how? Could that, that, that's unique. How how do we get out of all these other recessions? It wasn't because somebody had a had a stimulus package. It's because capitalist economies uh, left. You know, but bounced back. But my question is. Was it possible for the United States to grow up more, given that Europe was sinking and even no, China no, no, was? No, no, no. We we say it wasn't. It's not the Europeans' fault. It's our fault that Europe. <laughs> we started it all. I mean, we had a, we, we got hit with a recession before anything was going on in Europe. Uh, it's just, and it happened. Uh, I mean, you can get into the question of banking crises, but. Uh, but uh, they've happened in the past and they'll happen again. So, well, let me ask you then, what this current administration should have done better in order to achieve more growth, the growth that, or, or to not to have a failure, economic failure, as you put it? it, it uh, the best thing to do, I think, would have been to, to, to focus on, think about somebody, a firm, with the money to do it, think about launching a project, okay? That, what's that firm thinking about? He's thinking five years ahead, four years ahead to when the project starts to bring in some income. He's thinking about what kind of taxes am I going to have to pay on that income? Uh, we're looking at, the, at, the, at the, the medical system, which is sort of financed through firms. How much the medical system is currently proposed just isn't, doesn't add up. So the question is, uh, this my, my hypothetical firm is thinking, how much am I going to have to kick out of, of these my pr projects that have to go into medical care for employees? Uh, it, just, it just seems to be a bad situation. People, you know, it's not, uh, people invest when, when they think it's worth doing. And, and Obama hasn't convinced anybody that, that it is worth doing. 
and other people have. Well, the Reagan administration was started out just as much in the hole as, as the Obama administration had, and the and this economy bounced back in a couple of years. Why didn't that happen this time around? Reagan didn't have a stimulus package to get us out of that thing. That's the question you want to be thinking about. Of course. Um, right now, uh, about the fiscal cliff, uh, the fiscal uh, deficit, the huge fiscal deficit in the United States. This is important, of course, because the United States is the largest economy in the world. Um, is it possible to make a difference? Is it possible to reduce it by reducing? Uh, is it possible to reduce it by reducing taxes? As no, no, no. As no. it seems that the Republicans want it. Well, a lot of these plans are a little vague. So I'm not quite sure who wants what. That's true. But 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 the uh, the, the most thoughtful. Uh, <coughs> uh, 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 Thinking on the, on the, these entitlements uh, with Paul Ryan's uh, work from from several years ago, and he's thinking about about. And he's not, I'm not talking about an immediate crisis, but just sort of what kind of long run situation uh, would be consistent with reduced government spending, and and uh, a lot of it is the entitlements. There's no reason, for example, why I've got a, I get a Social Security check every, every month. Uh, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't need a bailout, I don't need a, a safety net, you know. I mean, I'm glad I had it when I was young and starting out, because it's nice to know, <laughs> nice to know that it's there. Uh, but, 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 you know, why are we going to, uh, going to take away the head medical care plan that I've got, which I think is terrific and I pay for, and, and make that a, a government project? You just, you know, you don't have to. That's not the right way to do it. You, you want to have a safety net focused on people who need it. It's like an insurance plan. It's, it's not something that it, we've just gone about it in the wrong way. And we now means the whole world, I think. I mean, because uh, you, you, Europeans are much deeper into the welfare state than we are. Mm -hmm. They've had plenty of experience with socialized medicine, for example. Uh, and, you know, people come to the United States for, 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 for important surgery. I mean, uh, I'm concerned about that. Of course. Professor Robert Lucas, thank you very much for your time, sir. Okay. Appreciate thank you. it. <laughs>